Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. I'm just a little excited because this question is awesome. This was a requested video. Let's cover it. Um, it was asked to me today. I want to get right into it. I'm excited about it. It's fun. So here are the details. One of the reasons I like this problem is because you don't have to read a long question. Still read five to a hundred times as usual. Nonetheless, here is what we have. We're given that a random variable x is distributed by, well, it's a standard normal random variable, meaning the mean is zero and the variance as well as the standard deviation is one. Uh, we have defined a new random variable, capital Y, and it's given by e to the capital X, right? So these, this is a transformation, right? transformation of random variables and we're asked our question is to find the kth moment of y crazy business crazy business so it is quite easy to get overwhelmed with a question like this i recommend you immediately just write down the definition what is the definition of the kth moment of y by definition okay Let's just write that real quick by uh, definition. We have that the kth moment of y is equal to, now this is absolutely going to be a continuous random variable. Since x is continuous, y must also be continuous. So this is going to be by definition negative infinity to infinity. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to write negative infinity to infinity, although that may not be the range of y. In fact, it's not. But I'll write that for now. Okay, so now we have uh, in the integrand, since we want the kth moment, it's y to the k. And then we need, actually, the pdf, the pdf of y. So we have this business right here. So this is just by definition. And this should, well, indicate to you which direction I want to go from here. And by the way, why don't I just real quick write down the values of y. Now, x is a standard normal random variable, which means it takes on all of the real number line, negative infinity to infinity. What does y take on? Well, we know a thing or two about a thing or two when it comes to the exponential function e to the x. And we know that if, well, no matter what value of x we have, e to that value is always greater than or equal to zero. Well, actually, it's always strictly greater than zero. So hopefully you can say to yourself, we definitely have this situation here. Why don't I write it in red? Um, y is, how do I want to say this? Uh, let's say this. Let's say zero. Let's say this. Zero is less than or equal to y. So it's a y is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so I'll have to change these bounds of integration. And what do I just do right now, right? because y goes from zero to infinity. Excellent. We need, we need this. We need to find the PDF of y. What is the PDF of y? This is one of the reasons why I like this question because there's just a lot of different ideas, concepts that come together in this question. So the PDF of y, I'll do this the way that I typically do this sort of thing. I'm going to use the CDF of y. So the, let's do, let's say this actually, the PDF of y is equal to the derivative with respect to y of, let's write this, let's say probability that y, actually capital Y, is less than or equal to little y. And I know you're sitting there saying, yes, this is absolutely true. If I differentiate the CDF, which is this guy, the CDF of Y, if I differentiate the CDF of Y, I'll absolutely get the PDF of Y. So can we find this? We definitely can. Here's what I'm going to do. We have a formulation of Y. It's given by E to the X. So this is equal to the following. We have the derivative with respect to Y of the probability i'm going to skip a few steps and you're going to know what i'm doing right because you're so good 
you know exactly what's going on. Is x less than or equal to ln of y? We can do this actually. Um, something to think about. I replaced y with e to the x. I took ln of both sides. Now ln does preserve the inequality. The inequality stays the same. Um, ln is a increasing one to one function. Uh, so we can do that. Okay. And let me just put a justification right here. This is because, hopefully you know what happened, because uh, y equals e to the x. I'm just using this, right? All right, I hope that's clear to you. Now take the derivative. Well, let me write it one more way to hopefully um, show you what I mean. So this is equal to the derivative with respect to y. Now, what is this quantity? This is the cumulative distribution of x evaluated at y. That's exactly what that is. Now what's the derivative of the cumulative distribution of x as a function of natural log y? I need to use the chain rule. That's right. So this is the PDF of x evaluated at ln y times, using the chain rule, the derivative of ln y, 1 over y. So hopefully you're seeing the distinguishment here. This right here is the CDF of X evaluated at ln Y. This is the PDF of X, right? Because lowercase, I took the derivative. I took the derivative, lowercase f, PDF of X evaluated at ln Y divided by one over Y. Because that's the derivative of ln Y. You guys are Calc 2 experts, so you absolutely know this, you agree. Now, what? Well, we need the PDF of X. We need the PDF of X. So let's find that real quick. By real quick, I mean just write it down. This is the standard normal distribution. We know, so note that the PDF of X, right? PDF of X is So what is the PDF of a standard normal distribution? It's f sub x of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to use this fact to now find the PDF of y. So this is what we got. We got the following situation here. Take my PDF of x, replace the x with ln y. So this is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative ln of y squared over 2 times 1 over y. Boy, oh boy, I hope you know what's going on here. This is the PDF of X evaluated L and Y, which is exactly what this is, right? I hope you see what's going on. Now be careful here. Can I bring this two in front and cancel the twos? Hell no. You cannot bring the two in front. Do not do some illegal algebra there. That's not a log property. It has to be, the two has to be an exponent of the argument of LN. You cannot do that, illegal. So let's work with this. There is something I can do nicely with this. So let's keep track of that. And uh, let me get myself some room so we can answer this question. So, yeah, let's do that. All right, so now let's keep in mind, uh, make note to yourself that we have the PDF of Y. So let's see what we got. All right, let's find the kth moment. So this is all I need is right here. All right, so this is what we have. This is what we have. All right, we have that the kth moment yeah, the kth moment of y is equal to, by definition, now remember that y is going from 0 to infinity times, well, the integrand is y to the k 
times the probability density function of y, which we just found. So let's make a substitution there. So this is equal to integral 0 to infinity y to the k. Now we have this business, so 1 over square root 2 pi e to the negative ln of y squared over 2 times 1 over y dy. As of right now, it looks like a complete disaster. It looks like a nightmare. What the heck are we going to be able to do to answer this question? Well, there is, there is one thing that hopefully jumps out at you, and that is u substitution. U substitution. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to let u be ln y. The reason is, motivation there is because, remember, u substitution, I'm looking for a quantity in the integrand such that when I differentiate that, I get something else in the integrand. That's right. So if u, so let u equal ln of y, then du is equal to 1 over y dy. I also need to make note of something else because I can't have this y floating around. I have to have all the same variables in here, right? So what is y equal to? Well, y, of course, is equal to e to the u. Clearly, I mean, u equals ln y, e both sides. All right, what is my integral now? This is now equal to the integral, I'll omit the bounds of integration for the time being, y is equal to e to the u. So this is e to the u times k times 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative u squared over 2 du. Now, what are the bounds of integration? This is quite important here. If y is zero, right? These, you gotta be, you guys gotta really be careful with this kind of thing. This is a real test of your knowledge regarding the subtle details of calculus. These bounds of integration are on what variable? These bounds of integration are on the variable y. We need to transform them into bounds of integration on u. If y is zero, look at my relationship. If y equals zero, now, y cannot be 0, by the way. This is technically an improper integral. y cannot be 0. Why is that? Because I can't take ln of 0. But, but, zero, but sorry, y can approach 0. So if y approaches 0 from the positive side, then u approaches, well, what's your knowledge of ln? How good is your knowledge of ln? Think about this for a second. I'll give you a second. One Mississippi. All right. If y approaches 0... From the right, ln approaches, that's right, negative infinity. Very good. If y approaches infinity, u approaches infinity. So I claim these bounds of integration are negative infinity to infinity. So, I mean, you know, we're not doing math proper here because this is these are all improper integrals. We're not doing it right, but whatever. We get it. We get it. So, now I want you to observe something. This right here, this right here, I could technically be done right now. I'm going to put a side note right here. This whole thing is what? This is exactly the MGF. This is the moment generating function of U. I'm going to put capital U distributed normally uh, with mean zero standard deviation one. So I claim, I claim, hence, hence, uh, we know this, the moment generating function of u uh, as a function, it's actually kind of like a, a k. This k is playing the role of what's usually t. But I claim this is going to be the following. This is, this is equal to, uh, uh, what is it? e to the one half k squared. So I claim, I claim this is our answer, but I'm not just going to say abracadabra, there we go, we're done. But if you recognize this, you recognize this is the MGF of a standard normal random variable u, k is playing the role, usually k is like t, and the MGF of a standard normal looks like this. 
So, I mean, that's, that's our answer. But let me show you how else you can get it. And you may not like this because um, we do have to do a little bit of fancy algebra. But that's all right. That's all right. We can be fancy. We can be a little fancy. All right. So, how good is your algebra? And my question to myself is, can I fit this on the board? Let's see what we can do. Maybe I'll have to come over here. All right. So this is equal to, bear with me now. This is equal to the following. This is equal to, I'm going to do this kind of quick. So uh, fasten your seatbelts and see if you can follow what I'm doing. Bring these two together and complete the square. I don't even think I really want to do it. I don't even want to write it out. I'm just going to write it this way. This is one half, or sorry, one over the square root of two pi. This is how good you need to be at this sort of thing. I'm going to bring the powers together, and this is a quadratic. The powers are quadratic. I'm going to bring the, that together, and I'm going to complete the square. So that claim does the following. This is e to the negative one half times u minus k squared plus one half k squared du. One more step. This is equal to, and I apologize, I'm skipping some steps here, but look, use your properties of exponents. You can bring e with just the power involving k, bring that out. I can bring that out of the integral because it does not depend on u. So this is e to the one half k squared times the integral negative infinity to infinity of this business, one over the square root two pi e to the negative a half u minus k squared du. One last thing to notice. What is this integral? What is this? This, all this is, is the is just, this is just adding up all the probabilities of a standard normal distribution where it's shifted to the right k units. So what is the integral of this? I'm integrating the probability density function of a standard normal, standard, standard normal random variable. This k just shifts it to the right, right? This is a horizontal shift. So imagine shifting the bell curve to the right k units and then taking the integral over everything. It's one. This is one. This equals one. What's my answer? E to the one half k squared. This is e to the k squared over two. That is the kth moment. And let me just fill in one little detail in case I've lost you right there in case I lost you. So look at this. Hopefully you can agree. Hopefully you can agree. Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm insulting your intelligence by writing this out, but just bear with me here. Look, this is negative u squared over two plus u k. How do I complete this square? Well, I first need to factor out uh, the leading coefficient. So this is equal to negative a half times u squared plus two u, I'm uh, sorry, minus minus two u, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna complete the square. Take half the middle and square it. Half the middle is k, now square it. So plus k squared. I cannot just randomly subtract. I really did, I really, I put the k squared there, complete the square, but I really subtracted one half k squared. So plus one half k squared. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, is this right? Hell yes, this is right. I mean, just distribute this, show, distribute this negative one half, and show it's equal to this. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So, that's how I got this. That's how I got this business right here. Hopefully you see what I'm talking about. All right? This takes care of the question. What a nice question. What a beautiful question. Uh, thank you for asking this. I hope this was helpful, and tell me what you think about it.